Welcome back to the Daily Dope Show. I'm Uncle B Bad, and I'm also, you know, paying attention to this whole kratom situation over the last couple years has really made me uh, lose faith in the fact that there's any hope to uh, to break the chains of corruption in the federal government when it comes to the drug war. I mean, you know, you constantly hear politicians and cops and lawyers and judges and doctors and addiction specialists. They're always asking. They always got this big question mark over their forehead like, hmm, wonder if there's a such thing as a natural substance out there that could do all the things that these addictive substances that we have for pain and other things, you know, I wonder if there's something like that out there that's natural and safe and you can't overdose on it. Or even if you do, you, it won't kill you. And it's really not that addictive. Maybe just a little bit like caffeine or something. Gee, I wonder what that substance could be. Could it be medical marijuana? Maybe. Could it be kratom? Maybe. But they don't. They instead they're it's the opposite. They're full throated. The FDA is going against kratom. A totally benign substance that cannot possibly hurt you. I mean you'd have to really just like be an a complete moron to be strung out on kratom. I mean, Kratom is another one of those things. It's like a natural substance that you really like if you do too much of it, it's just really like this. The effects of that is kind of benign as well, but annoying. So, I mean, whatever, man. Um, I do think that you could do a lot of Kratom and not pose a, a problem to people around you. Um, you're, you could probably go to work. If you do what the, you know, average person might think like, wow, that's a lot of Kratom, dude, to be doing every day. And, you know, that's, you can't say that about opioids. You can't say that about opioids. You can't be like, yeah, you can eat like a fistful of Vicodins and go to work. (laughs) You just can't do it, dude. You know, if somebody out there that's addicted to Vicodins might be like, oh, yeah, I got to eat a handful of Vicodins just to go to work. I'm not talking about that. That's called you're addicted and you take way too many Vicodins. So we're talking, you're, we're not even talking about this shit. We're talking about the FDA completely being so anti-science that it's just absurd at this point. It's just like they're making a mockery out of um, what would be just normal, you know, common sense. And then... They want to take, like, the exact approach to Kratom as they took to marijuana. And that that approach is called this total, total demonization. The FDA was basically invented to go after marijuana. Are you kidding? Look up the history on it. Look up the history on patent medicines. Don't believe everything they tell you about snake oil either. Um, so we have a situation here with this Kratom, um, demonization, as I called it. I've heard people call it, uh, something else like leafer madness or something like that. And I mean, this is just straight up ground up leaves from a plant. The only way this could be dangerous is if somebody added something to it. And you know who else knows that? The National Institute on Drug Abuse. NIDA. Now, you've probably heard me talk shit about NIDA on this channel several times. And um, rightfully so. Because they are garbage. They have garbage opinions on a lot of things. And if you look at their website, you're going to see a lot of stuff like anti-vaping, anti-marijuana, anti-medical marijuana. They're completely in the stone age on all that kind of shit. Why? Because their donors, quite frankly, don't don't want them to, you know, 
go out there and say, oh, yeah, vaping might be a good way to quit smoking. You know what? My parents quit smoking. They smoked for like 60 fucking years. They were dying from that shit. My dad had these bumps on his lungs, and he was like, shit, dude, this is it. And the doctors cleared him of cancer, but after the biopsy and all that scary shit, yeah, big marble-sized thing, maybe big, like almost golf ball on your lung. <laughs> you don't think that thing could become cancer? I mean, you got to quit smoking, people. And if vaping is a good way out, then fucking do it. Don't listen to NIDA. You can tell when someone's being paid to say some shit, right? But now what we have here is a situation where NIDA is at odds with this 44 deaths claim by the FDA, in my opinion. I'm, that, I'm, they, didn't, they didn't make a statement saying, hey, we're at odds with this shit. They just haven't made a statement saying, hey, we acknowledge that people have been dying from this shit. And, you know, if that was the case, if there was people dropping dead from Kratom, even 44 of them, which is a minuscule number of people to be dying accidentally of a product when you're talking about millions of people using it. Um, look at cars. If you take a swath of 5 million people that use automobiles, you're going to find way fucking more than 44 people that died from misusing an automobile. And that's just one example of products that kill you every day that we don't have like people warning us too much about now back to the um the thing with nida is if you have a product out there that's a drug that's killing people you know all you got to do is go to the the articles about addictive substances and you'll see they don't they don't miss a beat man they got crocodile and um uh, just every drug you've ever heard of that has killed people um they have an active uh warning going on right now about let me just go to their home page here real quick <clears throat> you'll notice this if you go to their home page it's a little slow because you know it's the government and there's a lot of people going to the national institute on drug abuse looking into this shit man they're curious but actually on their home page they had uh well what the heck happened there was this thing where it was like, hey, this is the alert thing like going on right here. We have we have some serious shit going down. And what it was was it was synthetic marijuana alert. Uh, that's kind of weird that it's not there now. I guess that... Whatever. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Hope that didn't ruin my whole video. But anyway... <laughs> So let's go into this story a little bit here. I first caught wind of it when the American Kratom Association popped off with this thing, talking about it, <clears throat> and it kind of sparked my interest. So, you know, I'll show you what I actually found out in a minute. Um, in a recent update of its official position on the botanical Kratom, the National Institute on Drug Abuse, NIDA, affirmed that, quote, Kratom by itself is not associated with fatal overdose explaining that only when the natural ingredient is contaminated or, quote, laced with other compounds, unquote, has it been associated with deaths. <clears throat> That's a pretty important distinction right there, and I want to stop right now and go over that, if you don't mind. I don't plan on making this video long as hell, but it probably will be. So let me just say this about that real quick. Um, when they say that as a legal statement that was looked at by lawyers and, you know, that is what they said in response to the FDA's comment about, uh, the FDA's, if you remember back in February, where is that article right here back in February, um, the FDA raised the death count to 44. <laughs> they added a few people on there and I did a video and went over it and it was these the, none of these deaths are because of Kratom if you I don't want to go back over all my talking points but basically the main one is is that causation doesn't equal correlation or correlation isn't causation we all know that that's that's like 
you don't even got to be interested in science to know that. You can just be having a little bit of common sense and we'll get you there. But when you're talking about this causation and correlation type thing and you look at these deaths, it's absurd. We're talking about half of them fentanyl, but mostly other substances. And then you have these ones where the, the dude just might have been into Kratom and then he blew his brains out. I mean, are we supposed to just guess that Kratom causes suicidal thoughts? Because I've never heard of anybody telling me that. I've heard of people with that have been on Kratom saying that they stopped having suicidal thoughts. Uh, I don't know, man. This is just out of the just crazy, you know, statement to make that Kratom caused any of these deaths. So I think that this is a response to that. And this update has happened. I used the Internet Wayback Machine to look at all the updates ever made on the Kratom page right here. It's called uh, Drug Facts Kratom. Um, what is Kratom? And this is on NIDA's website right here. So if you go to NIDA and you... you and, and by the way, if you go to NIDA and you look around for one minute, you'll notice that they don't fuck around, dude. I might talk a lot of shit about them, which I do, and they are they are dog shit, don't get me wrong, but they don't fuck around. They have all kinds of data and studies, and they, they are interested in the shit that really matters. They're the ones that publish shit about how, you know, over half of the opioid, the opioid epidemic, over half of those deaths are caused from fentanyl. And it ain't fentanyl from China that someone's cutting, you know, cheeseburgers with. It's fucking prescription fentanyl that's just being used wrong, getting in the wrong hands, or used in conjunction with other drugs or whatever, or abused. Abused is there too. That's part of the list. But um, overall, we almost shouldn't even call this an opioid epidemic. We should call it a fentanyl epidemic. And we should get rid of fentanyl as a practice. It should be taken out of the drug pharmacopoeia. You know, I'm not talking about make it a schedule one. That that whole CSA thing is not the way to go. You want to stop doing things? You want to make drugs that are deadly, like not available? Tell fuckers to stop making the shit. <laughs> Period. All right? You put someone in fucking prison for growing too many marijuana plants in states where it's so-called legal. So go ahead and tell the fuckers that make this shit that's killing people Way more than anything that you guys can talk about. NIDA, FDA, all you guys talk about is fucking marijuana and Kratom and uh, vaping cigarettes. But ma <laughs> just stop, all right? Go ahead and go to the manufacturer and tell them to stop. If we told them to stop manufacturing fentanyl, the fucking opioid epidemic would disappear overnight, it sounds like, according to your own information. So anyway, sorry, I'll get off my little soapbox there. In the Internet Wayback Machine, what you discover here is that there wasn't anything going on with Kratom all the way up until 2016. Hmm, you, you got to wonder, why is that? What was there before that? You know, did they, was Kratom even on their list or map or radar or any of that shit? Did they even care about it? Why would they care about it? You've seen some old articles written by these guys, and it talks about how Kratom is like this thing that was abused in the in Southeast and Central Asia and India and stuff. And it's like, what do you mean abused? You know, like, you, you got to get into, like, exactly why it was banned in them countries. It's kind of like the prohibition on substances in America. It's just a racket that the government does to create a black market and then to exploit that for whatever it needs it for as well as to fight it on both sides so that it looks like you know something's going on that the government's actually there for a reason it's just another reason to justify police and all this other shit we all know this we're not stupid so anyway what you discover with the wayback machine is there's a couple of updates that are very important to note you start with the um this one here, which was April 6th of 2016. And this one is, is missing, does 
kratom cause an overdose can you overdose on kratom that's not there instead you have this medical assisted treatment thing that says evidence-based government approved medications exist and are effective at treating opioid use disorders and alcohol use disorders <clears throat> and they're trying to guide you into a way that you know you can get treatment with methadone and suboxone which by the way i also discovered on nida's website that you can get suboxone for in newborn infants it's true <laughs> that's a good way to help opioid uh withdrawal symptoms for newborns wow i never knew that um it's almost like they're doing kind of advertising on nida as well so you got to kind of look at the articles for what you got to read between the lines on these ones but another thing that I notice that's missing here is they don't have anything about whether or not Kratom is medicinal, which is an important thing to remember because remember, scheduling drugs, Schedule 1, one of the criteria is that there's no accepted medicinal value. All right, so <clears throat> that was the April 6th. Uh, version of that web page on the NIDA Kratom Info Drug Facts page. And then you see the first important update. They still have nothing about overdosing. But now, oh, wait a minute. What's the difference here? I guess this one, I'm not sure what the update was, but maybe it was the, um, Oops, sorry guys, my fault there. Maybe there, this wasn't even important, this April 17th update. I'm not sure. But anyway, on this June 15th update, this one's very important because now you have, can a person overdose on Kratom? That's a new update on June 5th, 2018. And it says, Kratom by itself is not associated with fatal overdose. But some forms of the drug packed uh, packaged as dietary supplements or dietary ingredients can be laced with other compounds that have caused deaths. That's a weird thing to say because if we go back to the statement here, um, this is a direct quote explaining that when natural ingredient is contaminated or laced with other compounds, it has associated with. Now, that compared to this is different. But both of them still address the Kratom deaths that the FDA claimed. Um, this one basically says, yo, that shit was packaged in the dietary supplements was laced with some other compounds. You know, dietary ingredients can be laced with other compounds that have caused deaths. That doesn't explain away the fentanyl and... Because what the FDA's death list looks like is like people were on a multitude of substances at the time. It doesn't indicate that the Kratom itself was laced with anything. And then when you look at some of the other Kratom-related Kratom deaths or whatever you want to call it, um, the, you know, some other thing caused the death. Like when we say we want to know if Kratom can cause a death or not from an overdose, that's what the question should be. Of course you can overdose on Kratom. You can overdose on water. You can overdose on everything. Overdosing is also just saying you took too much. You didn't even need the extra amount. It's not necessarily indicative of dying. So the question should be, can a person die from a Kratom overdose? That's the fucking question that should have been asked. But it's this is all just... In, remember, this wasn't even there until June fifth wasn't even there back here in april and this whole thing about you know fate you know they raised the deaths from 36 to 44 that was back in february so the evolution of this page also now includes on june 5th the new edition of does kratom have value as a medicine now let's check out what they got to say over at NIDA about this. In recent years, some people have used Kratom as an herbal alternative to medical treatment in attempts to control withdrawal symptoms and cravings caused by addiction to opioids or to other addictive substances such as alcohol. 
There is no scientific evidence that Kratom is effective or safe for this purpose. Actually, that's, a, that's not even true. There is scientific evidence of that. And maybe you need to make another update because this is still the same statement today. We'll look at today's page again in a minute. <clears throat> but I want to break this down a little bit more, um, but not to keep you here all day. In recent years, some people have used Kratom as an herbal alternative in medical. So what they're saying, they're laying out the anecdotal evidence, which 20 plus thousand people wrote to the DEA slash FDA. All these people work under the Department of uh, the National Institute on Health. That's like the, the, the umbrella that they're all under. And, you know, when you see that level of anecdotal evidence coming in and you ignore it completely, you kind of look like a dumbass. But you also look like a fascist, like, authoritarian regime that's just like, no, science, fuck you. We don't care. It's what we say is, is right. What we say is canon. Everything else can fuck off. And that's what it is. That's what that's how they are, man. And what this really is is this is an evolution. It's an evolution and a process where they're gonna schedule one kratom. I, I the writing's on the wall, guys. I mean, come on. What more do you need to know? Right now, the ball is literally in the DEA's court to schedule one this shit. All right, so this this update was made in June. Let's see what's going on now. This is today's page. It's got a lot of leafer madness in there too. Like they're talking about some sometimes the leaves are smoked. I've never even heard of that. Can you even do that? It sounds gross, and I definitely do not recommend it because kratom is a substance that you have to take a lot of it to get the desired effects how much would you have to actually smoke Ugh. maybe if you crystallize like super concentrated kratom but even that man sounds ridiculous so this how does kratom affect the brain kratom can cause effects similar to both opioids and stimulants two compounds in the kratom leaves mitrogenine and 7a hydroxy mitrogenine interact with opioid receptors in the brain, producing sedation, pleasure, and decreased pain, especially when users consume large amounts of the plant. Mitrogenine also interacts with other receptor system, uh, systems in the brain to produce stimulant effects. When kratom is taken in small amounts, users report increased energy, sociability, and alert alertness instead of sedation. Uh, however, kratom can also cause uncomfortable and sometimes dangerous side effects. What about those dangerous side effects? Reported health effects of Kratom include nausea, itching, sweating, dry mouth, constipation, increased urination, loss of appetite, seizures, hallucinations. Those last two don't have any scientific backing to be made, and I've never even heard of any of reports of actual seizures or hallucinations from just kratom alone now these other side effects sound a little bit like vicodins but they also sound a little not like as bad as vicodins and also it doesn't come with the heavy burden of addiction because even if you just take vicodins for a few days after a fucking tooth got pulled which is another thing NIDA has non-stop articles on on their site, then you'll know that it's not, a, it's not the easiest thing to walk away from, man. And that's the least I can say about it. And then finally, symptoms of psychosis have been reported in some users. Really? I'd like to see those reports. Can a person overdose on Kratom? Here's another big update. Remember this one? Back in June 5th, they had this whole like diatribe about how they might have got laced in the supplements or whatever the fuck. Bullshit. Here we have information on Kratom overdoses is currently being updated. 
uh oh that don't sound good guys now are they going to go with the studies that we've seen coming non-stop since the kratom leafer madness started can we do that because we have, I know of at least three studies right now that are really good studies conducted by really reputable um, uh, outfits where they're ta we're talking several, not just one or two of the world's leading addiction specialists, doctors, and scientists. We're talking about a whole team of them on each one of these studies. These guys are peer-reviewed more than anybody else in addiction uh psychology or addiction medicine in general and these are people that are in addiction medicine so they already are shilling for oh we can fight opioid addiction with more opioids let's try some more methadone or suboxone these people are actually looking at kratom and they're reporting on it with real facts about their findings and it's sounding pretty goddamn like the opposite of the FDA. It's sounding pretty much like the, op the opposite of what NIDA would say. So NIDA, the ball is in your court, I guess. It looks like, according to this update here, it looks to me like you guys are going to be the ones to put an update on your website. And basically, that's what we're going to have as, a, as an indicator of what to, what's to come. Because... You know, the DEA basically, I don't know what they're waiting for. It seems like as soon as they got that from the FDA, that request, they're just like, let's do it, you know. If the ball's in their court, I don't expect, you know, it's not going to be much longer. We're going to find out exactly what's going to happen. So let's just go ahead and finish this whole, this bullshit. Is Kratom addictive? I never read this yet, but this is what they have to say about it. Like other drugs with opioid-like effects, Kratom might cause dependence, which means users will feel physical withdrawal symptoms when they stop taking the drug. Some users have reported become addicted, becoming addicted to Kratom. Withdrawal symptoms include muscle aches, insomnia, irritability, hostility, aggression, emotional changes, runny nose, jerky movements. Sounds like anything else that you stop doing. <laughs> I mean, you could stop doing sit-ups and you're going to get those side effects. How is Kratom addiction treated? There are no specific medical treatments for Kratom addiction. Some people seeking treatment have found behavioral therapy to be helpful. <laughs> is that all? Scientists need more research to determine how effective the treatment option is. This treatment option is. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I think it's the last line of defense against opioid addiction. So if you are so addicted to Kratom that you just can't stop doing it, I think you'll be fine. I mean, come on, man. Does Kratom have medical uh, value as medicine? So here's the big update. This is the biggest update because this truly tells us that when they say there is no scientific evidence that Kratom is effective or safe for this purpose, they, that, they know they're lying right there, first of all. And second of all, what they're doing there is they're opening the gate for the DEA to say, okay, there's no uh, medical value. So, therefore, schedule one, baby. I mean, it's, it kind of feels that way, don't it? It kind of feels that way. So, I'm going to go ahead and read the rest of the American Kratom Association's update. NIDA's position clarifies and corrects an earlier statement by the FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb that Kratom has been associated with 44 deaths sufficient, in his opinion, to justify placing the botanical on federal drug enforcement agencies' uh, schedule that would prohibit Kratom's distribution and use, even in its pure form. That's the drug... The DEA is actually the Drug Enforcement Administration... I know a lot of people get that wrong. 
Um, Nida's position does not come as a surprise, says David Herman. Dave Herman, chairman of the American Kratom Association, which is committed to protecting the rights of consumers who use Kratom safely and successfully. The data used by the FDA to make its original claim are clear that the adverse reactions were caused by adulterated or contaminated Kratom, poly drug use, or unrelated underlying health conditions of the descendant. Uh, NIDA's statement is consistent with these findings as we call upon the two agencies to work together to remove FDA's scheduling recommendation for pure Kratom and focus on protecting the rights of Americans who rely on it by removing adulterated and dangerous counterfeit products from the market. I don't even think anybody would complain if the FDA decided to do some kind of thing where they're like, all right, um, we got to make a rule where kratom has to be tested like they test medical marijuana or something i don't think anybody would complain because you would make sure that it didn't have the salmonella in it which i don't know if it ever really did and then the other one would be that we would know that it didn't have any fentanyl or whatever else the fuck people would put in kratom which i don't think i i really have a hard time believing this whole adulterated kratom story i mean I guess, man, is the is it really that hard out there to sell drugs and, you know, stuff like Kratom? Like, you have to cut it with other shit just to make it better? I think people are looking for certain things. They want to get what they're looking for. They don't want something that's going to fucking do something more than what they want. So that's a message to, to drug dealers everywhere. Like, come on, man, for, for fucking real? cutting kratom with shit get the fuck out of here man the fda and nida have a long-standing formal agreement that both agencies must concur on scheduling recommendations submitted to the dea in extrapolating the data to a faulty conclusion in an effort to place kratom on the dea schedule the fda's logic would require the prohibition of caffeine and even coffee because someone laced that drug with fenfen or any other contaminant. In fact, it could be applied to anything, even broccoli, once it has been contaminated with a dangerous substance. And we've all seen fentanyl pop up in just about everything. NIDA's position clarifies that, uh, and when I say that, let me clarify what I just meant. Nowadays, you have these things called pressy machines. I don't know if anybody out there is familiar with what that is. What it is, is it's a little die cast machine with a handle like a lever and you put your powder in there and you pull the lever down and boom here's a pill they have those machines that stamp out vicodin looking pills xanax looking pills adderall looking pills oxy looking pills you name it they're not that hard to make and people are sticking fentanyl in flintstone fucking vitamins these days so you could ban it all according to the fda's position in conjunction with nida's determination so you got to kind of look at both statements and be like okay you know i look at both and say they're full of shit but that's just me but if you look at both and put them together then you're getting what the uh american kratom association is trying to like kind of like you know that's what they're outlining here so we'll say it one more time NIDA's position clarifies that natural kratom does not present a public health risk and the fda has our has statutory authority to seize all dangerous adulterated and counterfeit products the american kratom association joins the millions of consumers who safely use kratom as well as the healthcare professionals and government leaders who support kratom in its pure form in calling upon the fda to follow the science to allow con- the consumer to allow consumer access to the natural botanical and to use its efforts and energy to go after those who lace it illegally said herman we respectfully request the acting dea administrator utam dillon formally reject the fda recommendation for sc- the scheduling of kratom and return it to the fda for immediate regulatory action against adulterated counterfeit kratom products This may require a little more effort on the behalf of the FDA, but it's consistent with science. It is the right thing to do, and it will put an end to the threat of criminalizing millions of Americans who rely on Kratom for their health and well-being. 
The American Kratom Association announced its recommended standards for Kratom manufacturers and vendors on July 18, 2018, to promote self-regulation in the Kratom industry so that consumers could identify vendors who comply with the FDA good manufacturing processes. And like I said, the FDA could just mandate that into law so that if anybody that's selling Kratom gets caught with untested Kratom, and I'm not talking about every drop of Kratom gets tested. That's not how testing works. You test batches. And if a batch is bad, a batch is bad. We've seen a bad batch supposedly had salmonella. I don't know what those claims are, you know, exactly. I didn't look into it, but I assume everything that the FDA says is just garbage and bullshit and propaganda. So I didn't believe them patently on their face. But if there was a bad batch or two of Kratom that had salmonella in it, that would have been nice to know. Because then you could have had a, a batch number identified in a barcode and every place where that barcode was scanned in could be notified instantly hey you have bad batches of kratom that have salmonella poisoning in it or uh, contamination take those off ship them back and you know problem solved so when the when the fucking propaganda comes out about shit like salmonella and other things adulterating the kratom supply that is when you say hey it looks like you guys need to regulate this shit a little bit. Now, don't it? And I don't mean Schedule 1. That's not regulating. That's completely being asinine and ignoring what is clearly the science that we have on this shit. Um, so that's pretty much all I got, guys. And thanks to the Wayback Machine, by the way. I appreciate your services and... Yeah, if you ever want to know what kind of shady updates are made at NIDA, just go to the Wayback Machine and put the URL in. That's all I got on this, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.